Behold the return of our type. A classic alien space battle adventure. When R-Type Final came out for the PlayStation, a few years ago it was a bittersweet goodbye to an amazing series. But now... R-Type, the original game that spawned many sequels, has returned for iOS in a nicely emulated version. Let's begin, shall we? Prepare for launch! The revolutionary feature is that you can charge up the beam and then release a more powerful blast. Which is sort of a nod to the anime uh, Yamato, where uh, the wave motion cannon on the front of the ship would gather energy and then have a huge blast. But, you know, it was the first time that this showed up in a video game, I believe. Anyway, and still, it's one of the best strategies is to hold your fire for a minute, build up the energy for the large shot, and then blast at whatever is coming up in front of you with a well-aimed, uh, strong laser blast. And then you have a lot better chance. It's very hard to play this and do a review. Really, um, almost every game of the late 1980s and early to mid 90s was influenced by the designs of H.R. Geiger in his movie uh, Aliens, or Alien. This boss is still pretty scary, if you look at it. But when it first appeared on the uh, original version uh, a couple decades ago, it was absolutely terrifying. I've destroyed it with a few well-placed blasts to the stomach. Yes, my, uh, my skills have lasted all these years. So we have completed level one, but there's still much, much more to go. Remembering them from a long gone memory, it was as if he had played this game many times. Perhaps in a previous existence. Something in his childhood remembered taught him how to navigate between the various alien threats. Well, maybe not that much. <laughs> uh, here is another classic R-Type villain. And uh, between this game and Life Force, basically, the graphics and sounds uh, produced a new level of disgustingness in... Uh, video games, you might say. You notice the weak point is this eye on the surface. So what I'm going to do is use my reflect laser. This is one of the first places you get to use a reflecting laser. I got it! I got it! First try and it's defeated. Onward we fly, my friends. Onward we fly. I was really hoping they would bring this classic game to iOS. I think by now five or six sequels to this original game, so this game is notoriously difficult and that uh, reputation is well deserved because your ship is destroyed with a single hit from any enemy um, ship or enemy laser. But the thing that I didn't realize when I first tried this as a kid was that the most important strategy in our type is to quickly get one of these little power-up robots and uh, get this option, which I believe is called a force in our type terminology. It is an extra sort of satellite robot that you can attach to the front of your ship, but you can also attach to the side or other parts of it. And uh, pressing the second button, you can either launch it off your ship or tell it to return. And uh, this allows for a lot of complicated strategy. Notice that I'm using it to block the enemy shots, which is a very, very important strategy in this game. If you want to get to the end, you better master that strategy. Now that I return to it, really, every level of this game is a classic. Here I'm using the reflect laser against a huge alien ship. 
yet another first for this game. I also notice I have this uh, very handy weapon, the uh, sort of ground-following laser, which comes in very handy. And uh, here's another strategy, is to launch off my option, or force, and use it as a sort of extra projectile. Send it into harm's way because it is invincible. Whereas my ship, of course, is the uh, thing that I must protect. Slowly blast all the parts of this large spaceship while not crashing into it. The genetic laser, even though I, I don't remember its official name. But, you know, I can, if I want to fire backwards, I can launch off the option, or force, and then attach it to the back of my ship, which uh, turns out to be extremely handy if I'm fighting enemies behind me. Now I'm going to launch off the force, use its side-firing ability to help me get at that power core. With one well-placed force shot, he was able to bring down the battleship. And thus, the brave Space Flyer continued his quest to save the Earth from the... I forget what alien empire I'm fighting against at this point, but... Uh... And how nice, they let you switch control modes inside the game while you're playing. Now, as somebody mentioned, this uh, touch control... Oh, well... You can use it. And you can use this to charge your shot. Um, control could be improved a little bit, but they can easily do that with updates. And robot spiders are weaving webs around a um, forest city, I guess, is what you would call it. And uh, I've got to cut those away. You know, space manta rays. I don't know. Our IREM was always very, very good at designing interesting uh, spaceships and situations. And I think the company may be shut down right now, but uh, who knows, maybe they can come back again. I would like to see them do that and produce yet another R-Type title because there are few series of uh, outer space shooters that are as classic as R-Type. Irem, we've missed you, old friend, where have you been? Now returned by emulation to our iPad screen. I would love to see an R-type title for iPad that would use the touch control, that was designed to use touch control, because you could probably do some amazing stuff. After playing the original R-type, I thought I'd remind myself of the awesomeness of following sequels. such as R-Type Final, with a lot of amazing ships that you can use. Everyone, this is your mission. Make sure to buy R-Type on the App Store, because your money talks. And uh, let's convince them to do a new iPad-specific title, designed to show off the power of touch control, and uh, the adventures of one of our favorite uh, space journeys can continue. This is VJ Franz K, your space pilot, signing off for 2010. Our type. Many happy returns, old friend or old nemesis.